all right now we will explore or understand uh, what chemical bases are composed in living organisms uh, in the previous chapter we discussed briefly the different levels of organization and if you recall the starting level was atom which is the fundamental building block of uh, of um, chemical substances uh, just like we have English alphabet that comprises uh, or makes sentences and we can write books out of those alphabets similarly there are uh, a number of atoms and in particular we have about a hundred and six elements that are present in nature and this if I took an element and hammered it down to the smallest piece then that would be the atom. It is considered to be the fundamental building block of all kinds of matter. When we say matter, matter are substances that can be either present as solid, liquid, and lastly, gas. So look around you and see all the objects that are present in these three states of matter. All matter is going to be composed of uh, elements or compounds. The smallest building block of an element are the atoms. Um, atom has a very unique structure. Um, it has a nucleus. The nucleus of an atom is the center region that's over here. And around that nucleus um, is a region where electrons move around the nucleus. And this would be the region that is uh, present over here. So we have the central core, which is the nucleus. And then we have electrons that are surrounding the nucleus. Within the nucleus, there are two kinds of particles. That is, this region inside the nucleus is composed of protons, which are the positively charged particles. And the second kind of particles that are inside are called as the neutrons, which have no charge or neutral particles. However, electrons are the negatively charged particle and they are revolving around the nucleus. Um, this is similar to the planetary model in which we have the sun and uh, all the planets that are orbiting around the central sun. So that's the basics of, of an element. Now, uh, this person, Dmitriev, uh, is a Russian chemist and uh, he did a fantastic job in which he decided, he went, in which he arranged all the elements starting from hydrogen, which is the element with the, the number one written on the top. I don't know if you can see it that close, till the element that is all the way down here. All of these elements are arranged in a periodic manner, which means that they are arranged from left to right. So we have the arrows that I'm, I'm, I'm pointing are different rows of these, uh, um, of these elements. The elements are also uh, arranged in a very peculiar vertical column, which are called as the groups. So this is the group and the horizontal rows are also called as the periods. Uh, the elements have a periodic arrangement in which if I was to choose this entire group over here, then they all have elements that are from top to bottom in this vertical column will have very similar patterns. Similarly, if I was to choose a cross row, they will again have very similar patterns. So all of these elements uh, are now arranged in the periodic table with their unique symbol. If you noticed, uh, for example, over here, we can see lithium is written as Li. However, potassium over here is written as K. So there's no unique pattern. Um, all kinds of symbols are present to represent elements. Most of the time, the symbols are uppercase one letter. But sometimes it could be two letters. For example, uh, if, if I 
point something, for example, over here. Let's pick up something that you can, oops, I'm sorry, that, that was not a good thing. I needed to get the highlighter. All right, here it is copper. And copper is, has got a capital C and a small u, which is the symbol for copper. Now, living cells have these four elements in abundance. You can see the hydrogen is is the most uh, uh, is the is the most uh, abundant element present in living cells, and next to it is oxygen, and then we have carbon, and nitrogen is almost present in two percent. A lot of these elements. Um, have a number on the top which that number is representing um, which we will learn later the atomic number and a number on the bottom which is the atomic mass the number on the top is the atomic number now usually the atomic number represents uh, the number of electrons that are present in an element however um, it's it's customary for certain elements to have uh, a different number of neutrons. Uh, when the number of neutron changes, um, that results in a variation of an element. I'm going to give you an example. For example, if I take the element carbon, carbon is supposed to have six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. So the number of protons are positively charged, the number of electrons are the negatively charged. Notice that the positive and the negative charged particle are equal in number, so the net charge on carbon would be zero because there is no positive or negative charge. However, if I was to write down the atomic number of carbon, it will go on the top, that is six, which is the number of protons or the number of electrons. However, the number on the bottom is the total of protons plus the number of neutrons, and that number is 12. So it will have 12 uh, atomic, uh, num atomic mass would be 12. Now, if there was a neutron of, of this element carbon, it would differ in the number of neutrons. So instead of 6, if um, it had 7, let's say it has 7 neutrons, what would then happen to the atomic mass? That number would then be written as 13 over here and 6 on the top. Now this variation of the same element from left to right are called as uh, isotopes. Carbon has a very unique isotope that is called as carbon-14 in which it has 8 neutrons and 6 protons. Uh, carbon-14 is um, is the radioactive isotope of carbon and this isotope is used for carbon dating. So when you hear about a fossil uh, that has been discovered and archaeologists have, have uh, dated it to a certain um, era in the past, they use the concept of uh, isotopes because isotopes usually emit radiation and the amount of radiation that is left behind can then be traced down through a through a very unique table to dis to determine how old or how much uh, or how many years has that element been present in that specimen so let's go on more about the radioisotopes Radioisotopes, uh, for example, the one that I just gave you the example of carbon-14, um, they're very unstable and they emit uh, spontaneously certain particles and these particles are called as radioactive particles. Um, these uh, radioactive particles, you might have uh, heard some of these names. Some of One of them is called as the alpha particle, there is a beta particle, and then there is something called as the gamma rays. Now these are similar to the x-rays that um, you are familiar with when you go and get an x-ray whether it's a dental or some other uh, uh, physical exam. Uh, the difference between an x-ray and, the, and these rays are that they have a different frequency and secondly um, these are usually used as tracers. Tracers are uh, molecules that can be detected in in a living cell 
So example, when you go and get your PET scans and uh, if you have heard of somebody who's had it and the images that are shown over here are, are represented uh, through the emission of these particles and, and their energy. So there are various kinds of particles that are used for many different diagnostic purposes. One of the ones that I have recently done was uh, with barium in which you take, uh, you, you go and get a GI um, track uh, studied by, take, by drinking this white chalky substance which is the barium isotope.